that will be shared there today for some very interesting information. I'd like to thank everyone involved in the interview this week. We're giving Danelle a rest, and we're going to have a new transcriber to make things go faster through the Corey and Cobra interview process here. We also need to thank Chris Bell, who's taken over the audio for Ricky Serafico on this difficult project. I'd like to thank Bob Charles and John Allen, the Pyramid One Network, for allowing me to have a radio show on their station. Also, Sam Ritchie for his fine editing. This information is very important, and we've done it to create some unity. At the time of this recording of the intro, on May 27th, the interview has already taken place at the same time that we did part one. And something's come up. Someone has sent me a link to a post on the Spear Being Alliance website where someone told Corey, leave Cobra, he's dark. And there were thumbs up from Corey. This was an inadvertent mistake, and I talked to Corey. He says that he puts a lot of thumbs up there just to encourage people, and he didn't really read it, and he apologized, and he would remove it when he finds out where it is. So it may already be gone, folks, but there's nothing major, no drama there against Cobra. Corey and Cobra have agreed, as we all agree, we want full disclosure, honesty, transparency, and justice. They have agreed to work together, especially for full disclosure. Cobra and Corey have. I remind you all that our worldwide meditation for full disclosure and prayer for our Planetary Liberation Day is July 8th. This is not the time of the event, but we'd love to see some of you creating some, I guess I would call it some artwork, revolving around the July 8th meditation at 12 o'clock for 15 minutes for full disclosure and planetary liberation. This is a media kickoff day supported by both Corey and Cobra. The exact meditation and prayer is unimportant. It's the 15 moments of silence and the intention that we will put forth for the healing and the liberation of this planet and the revelation of truth of what's been taking place on Earth for so long. I'd also like to thank you all who did support the Children's Orphanage some time ago and allow those children to be able to have their school fees paid. We actually paid for food for two months as well. And food is always an issue there. I asked some of the Creator Free website, and I was contacted by a nice brother named Daniel and his friend Little Fox. They created a beautiful website. It's called sandalaorphanage.org. S A D A L A O R P H A N A G E dot org. It's a nice website there. They're going to have more pictures of the kids up, but they have some projects and a place to donate. Chris worked hard to get himself a PayPal uh, account in uh, Tanzania. So for some of you out there, are certainly capable and abundant. If you could make a monthly commitment to helping these kids with food, it would be greatly appreciated. I have m myself donated amply there to help them, and I'm so proud of all of you for helping those kids. And they do have a Facebook page. You can check it as well on the website link there. Christopher Call has done a great job, and they need lots of help with solar power and water management, as well as finishing up the house there. A lot of the kids sleep in the same room on the floor. It'd be nice to get a few more rooms built. They work hard every day just to feed the 23 children. You can actually go visit them and take a trip to Tanzania and Kilimanjaro, if you like. Chris will take you to uh, Kilimanjaro, and you can live at the orphanage and get to know the children and enjoy yourself there at Moshi in Tanzania, if you have a chance. I'd like to remind you all, I do have a free book on my website. Go here to enjoy the Veil of Invisibility. It's a free download, and there's a link right here. It's a book detailing the Bush Nazi crime syndicate, evidence against Rumsfeld, Cheney, a lot of other information about the Nazis, Hitler, South America, the secret space program, its location, as well as the Nazis, Prescott Bush and the Bush family, who are actually Nazi spies named Scherf, came to America and infiltrated the United States government. The Tesla Bush Scherf Hitler connection is evidenced amply in that book. This information will eventually become instrumental in the arrest of the Bush family as well as the Clintons. You will find a lot of criminal activities going on in that free download there. And I hope you get that free book and enjoy that and share it with your friends. Uh, a lot of evidence and pictures with name, dates, facts, and figures about certain things going on there. I'd like to make a couple statements about my website. Number one, I'm coming out 
uh, with a new product. We're selling Dr. Bell's uh, receptors and projectors. Unfortunately, I made the announcement, and one of his daughters, who was a little confused, she has her own website with that, has called me a fraud. Unfortunately, she doesn't realize that I'm in contract with her older sister, who has just as much right to produce these receptors and projectors. I've loved these items. In 1975, I remember at Christmas time, Fred Bell sitting in the living room of his house. He was very excited to tell me about this design and showed me the drawing that he created about the receptors and projectors and the Palladian technology of uh, scalar wave energy. There have been some improvements in the technology in the late 80s. The Pleiadians introduced Fred to the Andromedans, and they gave Fred a new design that's called the Andromedan Holographic Projector. To be clear, both of the daughters have a right to produce these, so I'm working with the eldest daughter, and I'll leave it at that. We hope to have Alana, my legal partner, work out the details with her sister soon. But I wanted you all to know that there's nothing illegal. We will continue to get these out to people as much as possible. I really do love these products. Contact me if you're interested in finding out more. They're going to be integrated into my website soon. The other things I'd like to share on my website is they did have some Sintamani rings, and we got into a big bog down in producing these. I want to thank you all for being so patient. It wasn't really my fault. You've all been so very patient. I just several days ago, around the 18th of May, received information that a large number, about 16 of these backordered rings, which were very, very slow in coming, were mailed out. We have a few more to get out, but I want to thank you all for your patience. Some of you have been so kind and waited for over, I think, three months for some of these. Just just know it's been beyond my control. And we're finally catching up there, and we should be getting those as they are in the mail. I do have faith in that. I'd also like to let you know that we do have our Mount Shasta Summer Conference with Louis Martins coming up at the end of July. I know some of you want to go to both. If you do, let me know, and I'll give you a discount if you buy both tickets. Contact me personally. If you want to go to the August Conference, I recommend you get your tickets. They're selling very well. I was surprised at how quickly these are selling. Uh, we're over 100 days out now, and these tickets are, are going pretty well. So I recommend if you want to come, if you can, as soon as possible, do get your tickets there and get secure seat at the conference. They are limited. Louis Conference, the first one, Summer Conference, is wide open. We have plenty of room. It's going to be a very special, intimate time with Louis, who's very famous for program contacts. And we hope to have one of the, on the mountain when you come. Uh, the Forest Service is working with us this year, and they've okayed us to go up in the mountain. In general, we'll be having all the information and details as we get to the conference. A lot of our volunteer positions are already filled, folks, so thanks for applying. In fact, we don't have any more volunteer positions, uh, so thank you for checking in early if you got yourself going. Uh, we have some vendor locations at both of those conferences. If they're still available. I'd like to end this with a little statement here. There's lots of changes as we move to the vibrational phase jump on the planet, the energetic restructuring of all matter on Earth and the changing of the ley lines, grid or acupuncture lines as some of them is being aided by and in conjunction with the superluminal light beings of the Confederation and the Alliance. The benevolent extraterrestrials and the benevolent Agartha network are working with advanced technology, which includes a primary Sintamani stone bought from Cirrus by 40 different ascended masters which is now beneath the Tahoma mountain in Bolivia. There are tremendous changes taking place in the vibrations on the planet are shifting subtly and in powerful ways soon to be realized by all consciousness on earth. Within us are natural forces. These natural forces of human consciousness are expressed in what is called the gunas. We have sattvic, rajasic, and tamasic. These are the triune elemental forces within our physical bodies that react to different magnetic and energetic impulses and affect our personalities. We are the hierophant of these energies, and through our willful and rightful action and the control of our thoughts can overcome these subtle forces which have tremendous influence and can destabilize our feelings. We're all human. And we all interact with these various energies or universal impulses that are affecting our corporeal bodies. As most of you can feel energetically, things are becoming very intense. The internal mental processes and feeling nature of everybody is challenged. So just remain calm. As I always say, keep your hands and arms inside the spaceship at all times and sit on things and wait. I know I personally get very mentally oriented. I get kind of an impatient stress from having to sit at a computer all day. I overstress myself with my self-imposed homework. Uh, not in school, as I did my science at the last minute, and I always had good grades as it came easy to me, but my professional life is different, and I'm not so good on computers. I work very hard on the website and probably don't get as much relaxation as I can. So I suffer due to my attachment. We all are part of this challenge. You just have to keep forgiving ourselves and others. 
we can realize these thoughts and these stresses come to us are not in harmony and that this is just the purging of our lower elemental nature. We need to constantly check ourselves, our thoughts, our words, our deeds, and our actions and reharmonize our energetic field. So when these negative thoughts and these difficult times come through us, we need to just be patient and sit and wait on it and let it pass and realize that it's our illusion and the reflection. If you get stressed out, just go to the beach or something, watch some children. The joyful present that they live in, the exact moment of now, and the joy that they share is contagious. Thanks to God, they're so oblivious to adult concerns. Things like chemtrails, vaccinations, and other troubles are not part of their reality. The simple freedom from care vibration that they carry is the type of innocent joy that we need to express in our lives. We can be aware of these negative agendas and things. At the same time, we can let them go. And we can focus ourselves on the positive light of the future. I just wrapped an amazing two-hour interview with Andrew Bisaccio, and uh, look out for that one. It'll be quite interesting for many. Alex Schreier is always relevant, has agreed to another show, and will be coming up on my interview list shortly after that show. I want to share with you all the beautiful article called The Cosmic Plan. This article was written by Giorgio Pienza. After speaking with him, he told me that his article is compiled from information from three South American UF contactees primarily. The first contactee being Louis Martens, who will be presenting at the Mount Shasta Summer Conference Part 1. The other contactees are Ricardo Gonzalez and Sixto Wells. All three of these gentlemen have been receiving information from some of the same sources of extraterrestrials for many years. The ET groups are very prevalent in South America, are primarily Bolivia and Peru. These are the beings from Tau Ceti, Alpha Centauri, Pleiades, Venus, and from the inner temples of the Great White Brother Sisterhood from the area of Peru and Lake Titicaca in Bolivia. I hope you would check this article out uh, called The Cosmic Plan, enjoying my comments and the information provided herein. And you can go to the article page on my website on this link here on my bonus transcript page. Thank you all so much for tuning in. God bless you all and victory to the light. I look forward to seeing you at the Secret Space Program Conference in Mount Shasta as well. Ladies and gentlemen, we're back with Corey and Cobra for part two, an extremely interesting interview. Both of these gentlemen are confirming each other's intel with uh, little additions by each. I hope you're enjoying this and the unification and remembering about the full disclosure meditation, the Secret Space Program Conference in Mount Shasta, as well as... We're having uh, Cobra Ascension conferences coming out. So lots of places for you to connect with other light members and to become instrumental uh, light bearers or information givers to people in your community. This is really about uh, letting people preparing for uh, some tremendous changes that are coming to the surface of the planet. And we're looking for clarity in these interviews. We're going to talk uh, to Corey first. And this first question is from someone that says, Corey. You have mentioned that some ET groups have been here with a little bit of a service to self. Is that correct? Yes. Now, you have stated the Blue Avians are here because we are a parachute, as you termed it. It seems the Earth's mess is kind of holding them back from evolving. Uh, Is that correct? Yes, and that's the case with all beings that follow the creator kind of model and tinker and create other beings when they progress past that point maybe thousands or millions of years later they cannot ascend to other levels or or progress further until they go back and deal with their creations and whatever karmic entanglements they have with them but we're not a creation of these sphere beings but their actions that they had millions to billions of years ago somehow have them tied with us to where we have to ascend or reach our next level before they can fully. They've they've gone as far as they can. Their goal is to ultimately return to source. Okay. And this is kind of an earth based thing. It says if so, this implies they're here with their own agenda towards progressing. That's what the answer I pointed out. Yeah, if they may not be here at this time to intercede otherwise, uh, possibly, does that make them self-serving as well? Yeah, Kari used that to kind of uh, punch me in the stomach because she, I guess, took issue with their position that her people were service to self. You know, when it comes down to it, if we're all one and we're all karmically tied, 
or we're all tied on some level. I guess every type of entity would have to be, by that definition, service to self. Before they can return to source, they have to make sure that we are on the right path or moving in the right path. I guess in that context, on that grand scale, I guess you could label them that. Yeah, it just seems like they have a bigger technology that everyone has to listen to them. And Cobra, I'd like your comments on that little dialogue there. Okay, um, the whole galaxy is a living being, is a living entity, and all cells in the galactic organism are connected. So if one single cell is infected with a cancer, the whole galactic body cannot evolve fully, and no race in the galaxy can evolve fully until the Earth situation is resolved. And the division between service to others and service to self is artificial. It's a programming attempt to divide beings. Each sentient being needs to first take care of himself before he can help others. Uh, the key is in the balance of taking care of your own needs and then helping others. And evolved galactic society keeps that balance. And uh, taking care of your own needs does not mean stepping upon others. It means uh, creating a respectful cooperation throughout the galaxy. And this is what the evolved galactic races have achieved. They have created a civilized society when there are no wars needed, uh, no uh, conflict needed. Actually, conflict is an aberration. It's uh, an, an anomaly. And for the most of the galaxy, what is happening here is uh, pure madness. They live in a reality of love, in the galactic ocean of love. And for them, what is happening here is pure madness. Thank you very much, and uh, I would have to uh, agree with that. We're definitely in a madness situation down here. I would like to make a little comment here. I've heard and felt the same thing, that we're all one, and that you know people are here trying to resolve this situation, what's going on here. And for those of us down here, we're the same way. And if we could on the Earth, you know, we look around, we're separated by programs and borders and cabal. We could realize we're all one people, and that people are starving in Africa. There's little children, uh, orphanages, and people who are homeless throughout the world and suffering, that, you know, we're spending money on other things. We could feed our neighbors. We could realize ourselves as one. And this is coming, and this is what this movement is about, for people to wake up and for the leaders to be honest and just. We're going to bring out some differences here. We've established a lot of unity, and I'm looking for clarity. This isn't to emphasize the difference. Cobra. You have stated that the artificial intelligence that Corey kind of delineates that I would call the plasma scalar field mind control network, which is multidimensional and, and, and is reinforced by physical technology. But you say that it can be turned off and is part of a scalar plasma fence, which is linked to certain cabal members and chimera including toplet and stranglet bombs. The point being that this is a sophisticated supercomputer that reacts so fast that it appears to be sentient. Can you talk about that version of your understanding of this control network? Okay, it's a matter of uh, terminology. Uh, basically, what we have here is sentient organic intelligence that uses technology that actually uses technology as its body. And uh, fuzzy logic software program is part of that body. So one person could say, hey, this is an artificial intelligence. This program thinks and makes decisions. When in reality, there is a being behind that program that makes decisions and is assisted to a great degree by that program. So if you would look from a certain perspective, it would appear as the program is making decisions. But there is always an entity, a living being, free will, which is behind those decisions. And the Chimera group has invented so-called artificial intelligence millions upon millions of years ago and have tried to spread this infection throughout the galaxy through scalar uh, plasma networks. And they were successful to a certain degree, but I would say that the most evolved cosmic races know how to deal with that. Thank you. Uh, Corey, you have a slightly different version. Could you talk about your understanding? And I guess some of this has come from the glass pads, but you've stated that it's its own thing, kind of like the Terminator or the Borg, as we said. Could you share the information? You've said it's actually infected multiple galaxies. Can you comment on your version? And then we'll have you comment on each other's. 
some of what Cobra said sounds like a little bit of a mixture of two technologies, if I'm understanding correctly. I could be misunderstanding. There is a scalar mind control grid that has been around the Earth as long as there have been humans, you know, walking around. And we can simplify it and call it like a mind control grid or a control grid. There are two giant cruisers or ships that are not occupied. They are controlled by basically what we would call a computer program. And they complete the circuit of this control grid, most of which is down on the earth. And this is something that can be shut down. They've talked about shutting it down, but they think that shutting it down is going to be very rough on humanity is, is the excuse they're using about shutting it down. But the fact is that the newer special access program groups have studied this technology and they're mimicking it and they're using it for their own means. Now, the interdimensional AI signal that I'm talking about is a signal that was broadcast and it came in from another reality many, many millions, if not billions of years ago. And it cascaded its way through multiple galaxies. And in the manner I have described, it has infiltrated people's bioneural fields. It has, you know, infiltrated technology and exploited technology, but it's not technology. It's not an actual artificial intelligence technology that's created by organic beings here. It is a pervasive signal that now broadcasts itself through relay systems that it has tricked organic beings into creating for it. This is something that these more uh, technologically and spiritually advanced beings can deal with. Many, many, many lower tech civilizations that are you know, a thousand years more developed than ours on the surface are subject to having to deal with this threat. Okay, this is a completely different Cobra. Can you comment on, have you heard of it, this other kind of universal AI intelligence? Corey has stated that this intelligence lays nascent and, and hiding and then comes out, influences organic beings to create technology that it can then live inside, can actually be in a computer. Uh, if you touch a, a technology, it can infect you and then it can recede from you. It has its own intelligence, he said. Cobra. Can you confirm this? Can you say that you understand this or, or do you have a different view? Okay, my understanding is that this is plasma consciousness that can use technology as a vehicle of spreading the virus. And uh, I could confirm that this virus has infected one part of this galaxy, one part of the Andromeda galaxy, and one part of the M33 galaxy and Triangulum, and to a very, very limited degree, certain other galaxies in the local cluster of the galaxies. Uh, I can only also say that the resistance movement has dealt with that issue and for their own society, they have handled the issue. So if somebody would like to res uh, enter the resistance movement, they need to go through a certain cleansing process. It is something like a shower. You need to take a certain shower that removes all part of that single before you can even enter their region below, below the surface. And they have also assisted quite much in removing this from the surface. They have not been 100% successful, but they have been very successful. And they have actually introduced a certain technology into shower gels through certain multinational corporations. And people using those shower gels were actually, uh, they were being assisted uh, in the removal of that, that virus, that, that signal. And again, it was not 100% successful because the Chimera group have their own means in maintaining this. And it is the easiest way for them to maintain this is with people who are the, the most mind controlled uh, and the, the most under the plasma influence. There is a plan as a part of the natural process of what's going to occur with the energetic waves coming in to our solar system through our sun there's going to be an event that's going to completely purge the signal from our solar system at some point. Uh, this is exactly what I'm speaking about, about the removal of this plasma scalar field, removal of uh, Yalda Bavut, of this octopus entity, and this is exactly the event. When this uh, plasma field is removed, that is the moment of the compression breakthrough. A solar event that's going to cause a lot of issues with electrical equipment and stuff like that, but it's going to be what's needed to push that signal out 
while they're reintroducing some other very advanced technologies that will not be as vulnerable to this signal. That will kind of put a shield up for us. That's great. One more question on this for you, Cobra, was he said that this is the interdimensional part. You were saying it's connected. It's a technology. It can be turned off. From what you guys are describing, this signal is still going to exist, but it's going to be pushed off the Earth, but it's still uh, involved in other parts of our supercluster and various galaxies. Well, what's occurring is these advanced groups have created a dampening field that does not allow the signal to broadcast within the sphere of this dampening signal is what most of them do. And I guess it's a shield of sorts. Effectively neutralizes the signal. Okay, according to my sources, uh, the increased activity of the galactic central sun is precisely the means to erase that signal from the galaxy. So the increased flow of particles and I'm speaking of physical and non-physical particles and waves of energy, it is a purging effect that will actually clean the whole galaxy. It's, this signal will not exist anymore anywhere. It's an anomaly, it's an aberration, and it will be removed. And this is what the Gnostics uh, speak about when they say uh, correction of the original sin. And the original sin is actually the anomaly which needs to be corrected, and it's corrected with this new energy which will heal the distorted space-time structure and this signal, which is just one aspect of the cosmic anomaly. The information I've heard is that galaxy-wide, the signal will usually return after a thousand years, which is not, galactic-wide is not very much time after different galaxies have had their galactic emanations. It's a pervasive problem, but it's one that can be managed, especially as you know we progress spiritually and technologically and catch up to these other groups. Okay, thank you. I, I had a brief conversation with Alex Collier recently. I'm going to do another interview with him. And and uh, he was more along the lines of COVID that's a technology type of thing and kind of said that it's uh, in his, from his understanding with his uh, conversation with the Andromedans that um, it's different. So I guess we'll have to wait a thousand years and hopefully disclosure will, will uh, reveal a lot of this information for us. Um, I wanted to go into, uh, since we I was going to save it for later, but we talked about the clearing uh, of this energy from the heliopause with a system. Dr. Frank Strange has also spoke about this at a certain point in time, and I want to talk about the cleansing technology. He maintains that when he went on board the ship uh, Victor One with uh, Commander Valiant Thor, that he kind of walked through, it was like a magnetic field kind of thing that cleansed him before he could go on board. He was His clothes were taken off and this type of thing. I've also heard from the past Atlantean, uh, some transcripts I've read that they take this artificial intelligence thing very seriously. Uh, Fred Bell had indicated to me, um, as well as uh, Bob Renaud on the TerraCore files, has indicated that when an ET who has been serving in the Earth situation, before they're allowed to go back to their planet, they have an extremely security debriefing protocol, which is really more of a luminous and a, a soul energetic cleansing to make sure this this AI is not in there. Have you, either of you, can you confirm this technology has been around for a long time and a lot of worlds are very, very concerned when absolutely. people come about this? Corey first, I guess? Yeah, absolutely. We were warned and warned and warned by these different non-terrestrial groups not to mess around with this AI signal or these different artificial intelligence technologies that developed from information that we received from this interdimensional AI signal. Of course, the so, ICC I mean, and the Nazis disregarded, and that's our state. Yeah, yeah. And not only that, they started using this AI's probable future technologies to help them stay one step ahead. There's so many times we heard, you know, the, the cabal's going to go down, you know, there's going to be mass arrests. Well, they've been able to stay one step ahead of a lot of the alliance moves with this technology, but this technology has not been working for them recently. So that's another thing that's thrown them into disarray. They've become so heavily reliant on this probable future technology, and it's not just you know using remote viewing and all these different things that they're now falling back on. They used to have all these different ways of looking at that probable futures, but these certain factions became so reliant on this 
AI probable future technology that now they're, they're in chaos because it's not working for them. Cobra, can you comment on uh, the positive light uh, workers that go through this? You say the resistance members make humans go through that. Is there uh, any of the resistance or the positive ET technologies when their groups are down here and they go back up? Do they have to go through this cleansing as well? It's not really like you consciously engage this stuff. It comes into you subtly through your subconscious. Is that correct? For the resistance members that come to the surface and go back, it's a quite a quite a process. They go, as I said, through something that looks like a shower, then to go through a shower, which is actually a scanning device, and it scans their physical body, etheric body, plasma body, astral body, mental body, everything, and removes every kind of infection uh, before they can enter. And then, of course, they have the medical check. Uh, they have other checks before they can enter again. And this is quite a procedure, and this is why they don't like to come to the surface, because they know when they come back, they have to go through all that process. And uh, the surface of the planet is infected, and they know that, and they are very careful about this. The technologies to disinfect the surface will be available at the time of the event, not before. When the light forces have more power than the occupation forces, this is when the technology breakthrough will happen at the same time as the event. I was not speaking about this before, but there are certain technologies that the resistance has and other light forces have that will be brought to the surface at the moment of the event that will disinfect the surface from many things. This is one part of the compression breakthrough. So the living standards on the surface are artificially low also because of this. This infection creeps into the consciousness of human beings, and this is why they are so depressed, so uninspired, and I would say uh, the vast majority of human conflicts that are happening are engineered. They are not real. And this is all uh, orchestrated by this uh, technology. Well, this is uh, wonderful. It confirms a lot of information that I've had. You guys have both confirmed that this technology exists. I realized I didn't answer your question directly. But yes, full spectrum decontamination is a standard operating procedure for just about any group when you're mingling with a group other than yours or you're going out of a controlled environment into what we will call an alien environment for them. Yes, I've, I've also heard they have extensive uh, psychological questions and answers even after this screening that's, uh, that they're very um, involved yeah, with. Yeah, so do that too, yeah. Yeah, very interesting. Uh, so uh, that's it, folks. Uh, we can look forward to some, uh, I guess we could call them uh, uh, virus uh, showers. I'll, I'll get in line, and I don't care if we're out of hot water. I want one. <laughs> so that's very interesting. I'm glad we cleared up this um, information in regards to the AI intelligence there uh, for you folks. My suggestion that I talked about long ago in 2012 on Cobra's portal was my understanding is, is that it uh, feeds off the, uh, the mind and your focus. So you can starve this field through entering into the silence and, and you have the will of your own thoughts and your own decisions to disregard these negative impulses if you hold fast to a virtuous life. So here we have a, another question that kind of relates to this event breakthrough plasma field uh, clearing of the Earth. Uh, it was noted on the official NASA website. We've talked about this energy and the cosmic winds coming from the sun. On the Internet, it showed that the uh, magnetic fields of the Earth actually kind of went into kind of a calm state. Can either of you comment on that recent event? Was that? a technological thing that didn't register it, or was this an actual change in the Earth's magnetic fields that took place recently? I think it was about within a week to 10 days ago. Well, yeah, the, the Earth's magnetic field is connected directly to the suns. And as the sun is going through these different changes, as the cosmic energy is funneling in through it, through the cosmic web, there's going to be interaction. It's going to ebb and flow the electric field of the planet. Okay, so this was kind of a, uh, a natural change uh, that had a kind of a, it went to pretty much a, a zero calm state with the cosmic winds. It did not work that the, the shields dropped 
was incorrect, that they went completely down. Someone, I'd seen reports, I got a bunch of emails that I had asked about that in my last briefing, and I, I, I saw the, the charts and stuff. It did not drop completely. No, 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 it didn't drop completely, but it definitely changed. I will put this this way. Every uh, planet, on, and actually every star has uh, uh, a plasma field around it, and the plasma field around the sun is called the solar wind, and the plasma field around the Earth is interacting with that solar wind. The magnetic field shapes and curves the plasma entity, and the plasma entity is not just particle, it's a living being. And uh, in the case of this solar system, the plasma being is called Yaldabo, the, uh, the octopus entity. And uh, there are many life forces uh, working on transformation of that plasma entity. It's actually an entity which is trapped into cosmic anomaly. And what is happening is that the life forces are sending energies of healing and transformation in this plasma entity. And this is why the oscillations and perturbations in the solar winds are happening. And NASA has released an image or a video animation of a spiral movement of the solar wind, which looks exactly like an octopus. And this is a scientific confirmation of the intel I have been releasing. It's actually a living being which reacts on cosmic winds, cosmic forces. And the heliopause is the area where the solar wind, the solar, this entity meets the interstellar wind or so-called galactic consciousness. And the galactic wind, interstellar wind is part of the galactic plasma entity, which is called Pleroma in some old Gnostic sources. The Pleroma is the light emanation of the galactic central sun, and it creates, it actually brings life to the whole galaxy. And this interstellar galactic field is an ocean of love. So when this, I would say, not healed, solar system entity, this octopus meets the ocean of love, this is where the healing happens. This is one way of describing it. And the region where that happens is the heliopause. This is why there is so much focus on the heliopause recently. And whatever happens there, then actually is cascades down through the whole solar system and will eventually trigger the event on the planet Earth. And the changes in the Earth's magnetosphere and the Earth's plasma field from Allen belts is a direct consequence of what is happening in the heliopause right now. Very good. And folks, Dr. Bell was speaking about this in his book, Rays of Truth, Crystals of Light, about 15 years ago, explaining, of course, we have uh, various beings that we live in. We are a being and we are supporting many bacteria lives, just as we have a planet that has a life that is part of the solar system. And the sun would be considered the pineal gland. The earth would be considered the heart chakra. Our sun is considered the heart chakra in the local system of which the Pleiades is the pineal gland. And all of this is connected to the one life of the uh, central super universe cluster through our central sun called Alohe. And then this energy is transmuted to the sun and that the people of the earth, our consciousness is actually required. We have the power to stave off higher cataclysmic events with our attunement to this life force. The earth is resonant to that. Would you agree with that, that the earth people have an influence on the relationship between the, the earth and how it reacts or to the S and P waves of the solar system radiations, COBRA? Yes, of course, uh, because every consciousness uh, has influence on every other consciousness. Every, I would say every cell in the living organism of the galaxy has a say of what's going on here. And as I said before, if there is healing taking place on the surface of the planet, that creates huge waves of energy throughout the galaxy, simply because the Earth is the focal point of the resolution of the cosmic anomaly. And this is not by chance. Uh, the Earth, planet Earth was chosen with very highly developed cosmic architects to be the focal point, uh, the melting pot of various races, uh, when very different divergent galactic cultures could interact and resolve this cosmic anomaly. This is why everybody wanted to come here. This is why the Drapos came here. This is why the Orions came here. This is why the Pleiadians came here. This is why everybody wanted to be here, to take part of this experience and to, on a very deep level, everybody wanted to resolve this cosmic anomaly. 
and now we're in the final phases. So whatever is happening right here, it is the focal point of the whole galaxy. To resolve this and to bring the galaxy back into balance, actually there is an old galactic prophecy of the time when the whole galaxy will be light, uh, when the galactic network of light will be completed and uh, planet Earth and the solar system is the last point to be uh, included in that galactic network of light and everybody's waiting for the transformation to be concluded here. Right, and we can be part of that transformation. Corey, we talked about my little thing on the sun, if you want to comment on that or, or Cobra stuff. Yeah, you know, and, and what's playing out here on Earth is playing out on multiple planets within the 52 stars in our local star cluster. And the heliopause leads off where the heliopause of Alpha Centauri leads off and begins. So these stars in the local star cluster are also connected not only through the, the cosmic web, but in a more direct way through, you know, physically directly. And in our local star cluster, there have been all of these different planets that have had these Draco groups and other groups kicking dirt and causing problems, just like they've been doing here in our solar system. So there are a lot of things playing out on different planets in our local star cluster. And all of it's tied together, and all of it has to come together in some huge, beautiful cosmic symphony and we're more focused on what's going on in our solar system. And we, we see mainly intel about what's going on in our solar system. But our local star cluster has been a big issue for the wider galaxy. And that is something that is being corrected at this time. So we have a lot going on. And, and most of us just need to focus on our own lives, really, and just raise your vibration. All this is very interesting. Corey, you probably are not aware, but Cobra has put out a very powerful document that I resonated and a lot of people resonated with, and it's called the Galactic Codex. And it's kind of like the laws of Hanbury or the, you know, the Code of Ethics or the Ten Commandments. It's kind of a, a statement that is allegedly used throughout the galaxy and determines a planet's free will. And uh, I'm going to have Cobra break this down for you, and then I'd like you to tell me if you've heard about this. For many of us, for me, it's very valid, and it, it's been violated, and that's why we are having uh, engagements with some of these regressive ETs. Yeah, I've heard of these, yeah, these edicts. These things being set up, they're, they're slightly different for every solar system, for every culture, depending on how they've developed. The root of them are basically the same. Cobra, could you share your galactic codex? Is this a galactic codex or is it a different in the solar system by solar system from your knowledge? Okay, uh, I would say that the spiritual evolution of the galaxy starts from the center. So uh, around the central sun is the most light, and this is where the so-called central civilization evolved. And when it was expanding throughout the galaxy, it was creating a network of light and assisting in the development of other races throughout the galaxy. And together they have discovered that there is a certain inner code, which is not written anywhere. It is just how things are, how societies, the divergent societies can co-create and coexist. And the Galactic Codex that has been published on a blog is just, I would say, interpretation of that inner truth, which is aligned with human mind. So I would say that the underlying truth is the same throughout the galaxy, but the way beings perceive or interpret that is according to their own development and their own understanding of the truth. But some basic uh, rules are the same. There has been a lot of talk about non-interference, like it is a cosmic law. It is not. Non-interference was just an excuse for the Archons to keep planet Earth occupied. What is really happening is if a certain entity on a certain planet wants to create contact, that contact should be granted. And the reason why this contact has not been granted on planet Earth is not because of the law of non-intervention or non-interference, but because somebody was and still is preventing contact. And if people begin to understand that, we will make one big, huge planetary leap towards full disclosure. 
to understand why full disclosure is not happening now. It is not because there are not beings out there that they would like to contact us, but because somebody is preventing that contact by taking humanity hostage. So when this hostage situation is resolved, full contact will happen. It's a natural law, it's our birthright. We have a right to be speaking with our star brothers and sisters. We have a right to interact with them. This is our divine birthright, and this is what I'm fighting for. Corey, could you comment on what Cobra has said here in regards to that it's really not free will that they don't interfere here with uh, the reason that we can't be contacted and all that? You know, there is an indication that our free will uh, has been gone around here. It's more of a safety issue and a hostage. Can you comment on your views on that? In the Super Federation, the laws of free will are important and mentioned, but the laws are kind of soft and loose-knit. There's, there's ways around it, and you know they have obviously found ways around the laws of free will. Now, the fact that they were having open battles in the skies above developing humans for tens of thousands of years up until very recently, up until the point in, in time when they signed these accords after the time of Muhammad, that tells a lot. That To me, that's openly and directly interfering with the development of a world, you know, genetically, spiritually, and uh, ongoing interference with our civilization on a sociological level. Right. And one of the articles that I have uh, posted uh, repeatedly, and I hope people will really get, is uh, the Terracor Files, an overview of the Amakan situation, where it talks about the syndicate and indicates that the reason these treaties were signed is both the Confederation, the Alliance, and some of these syndicate uh, dark uh, regressive ETs have been in major battles that have decimated all sides and at all costs they want to avoid this battle and would you both agree this is why hostile groups can share bases on the moon and yet respect each other's space sort of i've heard there are incursions and attempts all the time uh in these bases mm -hmm. and their securities no, no, no. yeah the the moon there's there's both pause there's nazi bases dracos next door to confederation and um uh, Pleiadian and positive bases. Uh, is that correct? Yeah, there are all kinds of embassies up there. A large part of it is controlled by a, a negative group. But with all of the agreements that have been signed, especially on the moon, the moon is kind of like Antarctica. It's all split up and it's a major diplomatic area. But, you know, there's fighting going on down in Antarctica. The only people that have attacked or done anything to the moon has been us humans, these lower military secret space program factions have launched all kinds of things at the moon, and they're the only ones that have done anything you know, overtly hostile. It's uh, a very delicate balance up there that none of these groups are going to take the chance of screwing up. Right, they don't escalate into a full-blown conflict that could reach, reach galactic proportions, not only our solar system. C Cobra, your comments on the di uh, diplomatic relations on the moon and how this tenuous ceasefire, to a certain extent, is taking place between these various groups. Okay, first I will uh, describe the situation on the, on the surface of the Earth. Yes, this is true. There were many treaties signed because if those treaties would not be respected, we would have two things happening. We would have reptilians open, openly eating children for breakfast, and we would have Pleiadians rescuing uh, the victims of car crashes. And both things happening at the same time could lead to extreme actions. So this was not to be advised. And this is why this uneasy treaty has been signed. And part of this treaty is protecting us and at the same time as it is protecting us, so part of this treaty was to protect the light workers and our light warriors. But uh, on the other side of the coin, the same treaty is protecting the most visible cabal members. So it goes both sides. And this uneasy treaty 
is being respected to a certain degree for all the decades. Of course, not completely. There have been things happening on both sides. But this treaty will be respected uh, to, uh, until the time of the event when the surface of the planet will be liberated. I can confirm that what Horik has described for the moon has been happening on the moon until recently. I cannot confirm what is happening there recently, but yes, it has been. Uh, there have been many interest groups there with quite strict areas where they could move and they had to respect their borders. Otherwise, they could have uh, mutually assured destruction. And uh, most races have discovered and most factions have discovered that that is not a uh, same option. So they tended to avoid direct uh, open combat, direct open confrontation, uh, because they understood that it would be the end of the story for them as well. Yeah, it's very sad. Our solar system uh, is kind of a microcosm of the Earth, and hopefully uh, it's a shame that they even have borders on the moon at this time. Hopefully this will be resolved. I'm going to ask Corey this question first, and then Cobra. A lot of questions about the moon. It doesn't rotate. Uh, Corey, what is your story of the history of the moon? Is it artificial? Is it uh, bought from another area? Was it a spaceship? Uh, what's the story of the moon from your perspective? It's history and it's locked orbit. It was a natural formation that was hollowed out and made into a giant arc. It may have been a part of the original defense network that was created by what they call the ancient builder race, which was in operation up until the point of when this super earth blew up. It brought down this defense grid that was around our solar system and also protected the solar systems of the local star cluster. When this technology went down, all these different races were referred to as genetic pharma races began to come in and, you know, mess around with us, with our genetics and, you know, just doing whatever they wished. Okay. I'm sorry. What was the original question? Sorry. I got off on a tangent. That's okay. You kind of answered it. So for you, it was a, it's a natural created planet or a moon that was created originally naturally and it was hollowed out and used as an arc, uh, possibly by ancient builders. And there's conflicting information about it from the different groups that have looked at the information when they've done archaeological expeditions throughout the moon. Depending on the group and their point of view or religious beliefs, they've come up with several different perspectives about what the moon is. Okay, Cobra, I'd like you to comment on your understanding of the moon. Uh, it, does this coincide with Corey Stoll, or do you have a slightly different perspective? The moon is a natural object uh, which has an orbit that is tightly locked to the Earth, and this is uh, quite a natural occurrence uh, through most of the solar systems. It has not been hollowed out, but it has been honeycombed, which means that there have been tunnels dug below the surface of the moon, there have been tunnels expanded through the natural lava tubes, uh, underground cities, and various um, civilizations have been using those for quite extended periods of time. And I would say it's a natural satellite. It's nothing artificial about the moon, but yes, it has been used for many purposes in, in its past. Okay, thank you both. That's great. This is kind of more for Corey question, but uh, Cobra, can you answer? And Corey, we've spoken about this before, and this is from one uh, person, uh, but it's not saying that you don't think there's a positive galactic federation, but again, you're so far in your narrative, you have given us the ICC, the uh, Nazis infiltrating this kind of hostile, what's going on with the dark fleet. We know you've gone to these super federation meetings. You've told me personally in our private conversations that you've interacted with some of them, but it's kind of lacking just as the general view of some people who who i've got a couple questions like this so here's the question it seems that Corey says there are many et races and federations with different agendas but he doesn't seem to believe that there is a galactic confederation of positive races working for the light at least it seems he never mentions it really apart from the sphere being alliance so the question Corey, do you, you believe in the positive galactic confederation and do they outnumber the bad guys and what is your take on their efforts are they benevolent 
there again, we're throwing around positive, negative, and all this kind of thing. The Super Federation, it's a super federation. It's made up of other federations. And these federations are made up of hundreds or thousands of solar systems, if not more. So this super federation could very well be made up of some of these groups that this person mentions, but they've not identified themselves in the same manner that people are identifying them on Earth or online that I'm hearing. These groups, just as I've stated, some of them are positive from our point of view, seem to be very much wanting to help us, even though they have their own agenda, which you know, any being is going to have its own agenda. Some of them really wouldn't mind, you know, seeing us replaced with a, what they consider more responsible caretaker being on this planet. So it runs the full spectrum between the people that are a part of the super federation. Now, for the most part, most of them are what we would call from our point of view, positive. They want us to progress they are part of this grand experiment. We're a part of this grand experiment. And if they want to progress, they want us to progress. So that's the best I can explain on that. Okay, thank you. I was thinking, you know, obviously we have this Ganymede that Cobras talked about that my friend Luis has been to this uh, artificial moon and it is a training ground for guides and teachers. And it's a group that very much has motherly loving instincts. It's like a sore foot. We're a, a sore foot in the galaxy and they're here to mend it through mentoring the human consciousness field. So uh, when I say negative, and I know that's a judgment and good and bad and all that, but I mean, I'm talking about uh, the groups that are working with the government in Agenda 21, depopulation. Super Federation, they're, they're on a much higher level. Most of the people in, in the secret space programs are not even aware of these groups. They're aware of more of the groups that they're dealing with, like these Draco groups or these other groups that have come in that are not heavily partaking in this Super Federation. Right. My point being that the, what, what I consider when I use the word negative and I'm not trying to, you know, uh, deny an entire race of uh, absolution or changing in any way. But uh, when a race is violating the Galactic Codex, that's the groups that I'm talking about that would be negative. And it seems, you know, j the viewpoint from some people is that the reporting and your stuff. And I know you have a lot more stuff. We're just waiting to hear. We want to hear details, who you met, what group they were, what they said, what their opinion is, what you could reveal about their positive plans. Do you have anything on that? Well, there is some information that I have revealed in a yet-to-be-released uh, cosmic disclosure that we're having to do a little bit more editing. I ended up giving a lot of descriptions and a lot of operational information that I was told it was okay to share, but then some of these groups did not appreciate it. So there's still some things I need to ferret out before I share information, especially in light of what occurred most recently between Gonzalez and I with an incident where I was picked up and questioned by a competing faction that's caused a lot more stress and uh, issues between the SSP alliance and myself. So I have to be a little bit careful not to rock a already very rocky boat. Cobra, I'd like your comments on that uh, aspect between the positive and the negative alliances out there. And are they really communicating? You mentioned the Dracos don't communicate, they don't take part. First, I need to say there is a Galactic Confederation that is positive. It's very real. Uh, they have actually saved my life many times. So they are very real, at least to me. Uh, and there are many races that belong uh, to that confederation. It is, uh, from, our, from my perspective, the most powerful group in the galaxy because they live in a reality of cosmic love and they don't have any, I would say, back motivation, many, any agenda. They simply would like everybody to have that experience. This is their natural uh, tendency to share and expand that galactic love experience throughout the galaxy and to heal the anomaly which exists here. This is their primary motivation. And as the galactic network of light expands throughout the galaxy, more and more races join 
through a process of integration inside of this galactic network of light. Through that process, their sovereignty and integrity is respected, and they enter this alliance as equal participants in the galactic evolution process. Uh, races that don't want to cooperate are basically mostly races that have an agenda, especially races that want to dominate other races, for example, like Dracos. And uh, there were many negotiations with Dracos, but the, their negotiation style is not an attempt to find a solution. It is more for them to enforce their own way. So at a certain point, they have to be enforced. They have to be put into certain situations where they cannot harm others. Because by harming other races, they are violating the Galactic Codex. And every race that oversteps certain boundaries needs to be dealt with. And now races that have overstepped boundaries inside of the solar system are being dealt with. It is that simple. Cobra, with the great force that will come forward and neutralize these negative forces, perhaps with the technology of the Blue Sphere Alliance, which seems to be able to repulse them, um, what is going to happen to these negative races? Will they actually be arrested? Uh, we've mentioned that some will be sent to the central sun to have their souls reset. Will some slip through the cracks and continue in other areas of the galaxy, or is it intended that some of these beings are placed on um, quarantine status in other worlds where they work things out. What, what's going to happen there, Cobra, to these beings? Uh, will we have to revisit this situation in a million years? No. This is uh, the final clearing process of the galaxy. Uh, all the uh, individual sentient beings that belong to those races will be given certain choices. If they want to cooperate, they will be given assistance. There are many uh, attempts, positive attempts to give them space to think about it and realize that uh, the positive path is the path that makes more sense. If they don't want to cooperate, they will have to go through the restructuring process because darkness had a certain time slot in the history of the universe and this time is almost over. It's, it's game over for darkness. It doesn't have any purpose in the evolution. It is simply an anomaly which needs to be corrected. Thank you very much. Uh, Corey, that Cobra has a very positive uh, view of the future. Do you have any uh, information? I know you're dealing with a little, a lot of the secret space program stuff, uh, and I'm sorry for the violation of the group that contacted you again. Uh, but can you tell me, uh, do you have this kind of confidence that the Blue Sphere beings uh, indicated to you that this is going to be healed once and for all, and that it's a galactic-wide cleansing and healing that's uh, going to take place through the planet's Earth's liberation. Yeah, that's very much the entire reason why they were here. That is their purpose. That is their mission. So I have to have faith and believe that is going to be the ultimate outcome. Well, folks, that was a great interview with Corey and Cobra Part 2. I hope you enjoyed that. To let you know, folks, uh, they have agreed to do another interview. We're going to let some time pass here, and um, we'll revisit this. They both have extremely busy schedules. It was very difficult to get them together, but we're going to do it again. I'd like to thank you folks for listening, and if you check into my website, thepromiserevealed.com, under the Victory of Light, there's a transcript there with some bonus features and some interesting links and information that I'd like to share with you. Also, if you want to join me this summer with Louis Martins in Mount Shasta, July 29th, 30th, and 31st, a very unique program with a bona fide contactee who uh, will be probably producing a program contact for us on the mountain. We're going to be up there in prayer and meditation, and we'll probably have a visit from the benevolent guides that he's in contact with.